All right, uh, Greens family, uh, this is Bomani Samba, and welcome to our Africa for the Africans Journey of a Lifetime to Ghana. And this is our 23rd Journey of a Lifetime. And family, we go way back in the early 2000s. So let me just start from there. So in 2003, that's when I started studying about uh, Africa. And then in 2004, that's when I started traveling to Africa. So that's 19 and 20 years ago. And then in 2006, that's when we started doing these incredible Africa for Africans tour. And the first tour that we started off was our Ghana Repatriation and Investment Tour, and that was December of 2006. And then two months before that date, that's when we started Africa for the Africans in October of 2006. I was 28 years old, just like the um, just like Marcus Garvey when he started the Universal Negro Improvement Association. So not walking in the same legacy as Marcus Garvey, but as I talk about the legacy of like. Uh, Marcus Garvey and uh, the Africans from the diaspora that built uh, Liberia. You know, we're just continuing a great movement by our ancestors that laid a foundation for us to be, you know, to, for us to literally put ourselves in a situation where we can just uh, build a strong pan-African energy and just uh, figure things out amongst ourselves as a people and uh, just uh, coordinate our efforts from um, from the Americas uh, to the African continent. And so. Uh, we as a people from the diaspora in the Americas represent this a strong energy of people, people who know how to run countries, who know how to run governments, who know how to run industries and things like that. You talk about the black people from America, from, you know, from North America, South America, Central America, the Caribbean Islands, uh, that's uh, the Americas. Uh, so that's a strong connection. So that's what we've been building um, over the last uh, the 17 to 20 years. And so. We're unapologetic about it, and we're about that business and life, and uh, we uh, we put the work in because you know we see other nations, races of people uh, enterprising. You know, we see what used to be what uh, was Asia as just an impoverished uh, region or an impoverished uh, continent or parts of the world, but now they're the roughest, toughest people in the world. They build, manufacture everything, and some, and they 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 also stepping up to the so-called world powers and say we have the best navies, we have the best marines, we have the best army, what you want to do. You know? So my point to you is that everyone else is competing. So that's what we build in the energy of Africa for the Africans. So we can compete as a people and we can connect and network with our other brothers and sisters. And people may say, hey, we're underdogs in this fight and this um, mission and, and so on. And so on. And you know, I even had people told me that I'm fighting a losing battle. I said, you know, when you're a warrior out there, you know, you don't make you don't give reasons or excuses you you, know, you find a way to, to to pull the victory you find a way to make it work you find a way to this uh, keep us connected so the, the staff and crew you see these are my brothers we've been together for a long time we've been you know we've looked out for each other my good brother right here tour guide Pabna Baka me and him have been rolling since 2007 and you know and a lot of what I've been able to get accomplished here is because of him and then the same thing uh, where's my brother Mohammed Mohammed is always so quiet Mohammed Addison is another one of our uh, you know, assistant uh, tour guides and he is uh, running his own business operation also and he does many things as far as uh, dealing with Lance Commission. He helps us with all of these things. So when, I, when people ask me about people who to trust and do things with, don't, you know, don't deal with that guy that say that you know, he's a chief because you think he's cute and look nice and everything. <laughs> deal with the people that we have uh, in business because that's how you, we're going to survive in this. Because when it comes to us, it's, it's not like a whole population of black people down with the uh, black progressing and nation building, you know? You know, it's kind of like when Niles was saying this song, uh, half of us is trying to make it, the other half will try to take it, you know? And it just ended up just being that situation. So those of us that believe in a vision of global pan-Africanism, regardless of wherever we're from in the black world, we work together. And sometimes we have to just protect each other from the people in our own country. Like, Pablo looked out for me because, you know, it's like when people see us, they just think we were walking ATM machines, unfortunately. And things like that. So I'll just make sure my brothers here. That's uh, Kwabna, Muhammad, and then uh, Yao is uh, Yao is our other uh, tour assistant. And you know, so that's our main crew right there. Let's appreciate the energy because, like, I tell them all the time, none of this could be pulled off because you know, I work out of my office uh, in uh, you know, Georgia, which I just I'm one of the people that don't like renting an office out in town because I want to get up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, and just get to my computer and just get to work and uh, just keep it rolling. So. And then you know the money we save from this spending it with the, the white folks out in town with their office and things, you know, there's more money we spend here in, in uh, Ghana. Just like I'm always telling everyone, if you travel with me, you don't need do, outside of Egypt you do not need to pay for a connection flight, you know. All those things are included 
And then the only thing we say is to spend some more money in the, the country because the goal ultimately is always to put black dollars in black hands, build black uh, economic empowerment, support black home business, and just build something to where we as a people can just say, hey, you know what? We're going to work together to build a better future for our children. So even when you see the land, uh, uh, Black Star Pan African community, some people say, uh, why you only have five houses there? Why you only have this? Not that? And it's a situation where our goal is to build it from there on, but you know we need other people to participate. Uh, it's only so much uh, that uh, we can, uh, you know, we can do. But uh, the goal is always to build something to where we can get our children in a mindset of uh, competing. So I'm big on technology and business administration. That's how we run this operation. And my son, I've been teaching him the world of technology and business administration since uh, two years old. He's uh, 12 years old now. Be 13 next month. And you know, based on that, that's, that's the vision that we have for our children in Jihadzi and other parts of Ghana and other parts of the black world um, because you know, we're, we're not going to limit ourselves. The goal is to get them into a competitive environment. You know, I'm always telling people that you know, I went to, you know, we left, uh, I left Jamaica when I was 11 and then by 13, I was there at a high school called Transit Tech High School which literally transformed and changed my life from that time to now. And also, you know, but, and it's just based on the fact that you know, parents uh, gave me a great opportunity to just make, make, you know, make something of yourself and then uh, the systems and things that's in place in the New York school system. I'm always telling people, no matter what the haters are out there, that New York City is the greatest city on the planet and it's literally just more incredible than people think of it because when you think of all of the Asian countries, they copied everything because when I went out to Asia, uh, you know, when I was in the Navy, I was like, man, this is a replica of Manhattan. Like, everything seemed to be a replica of Manhattan or just New York itself. Uh, and that's the inspiration. So, um, you know, the, the school systems that they have in place, it puts you in a uh, situation where if you, you know, take time, you know, they have school systems called automotive, aviation, transit tech, you know, you learn technology. And, and I always talk to my younger brothers that, you know, some of the best things that we can do as black men is just get into some of these fields and then, you know, work our way up and build our own industry because now we have the skills to be entrepreneurs. And the same thing when I connect here with my brothers and sisters here in Ghana and tell them, hey, you know, the, um, the system is only going to offer us so much. It's just up to us to figure it out and build the enterprises that we need to build. So this whole um, motion, vision, and movement of Africa for the Africans and us reconnecting to the African continent is to build the industries that we need to build and get our children in a position so they can compete. Uh, beyond that, uh, what you're looking at uh, will be a future in Africa where all the Asians, the Europeans, and other um, races and nations in the world, they'll They'll be here building everything that you need. It'll be nice, it'll be beautiful. But then the only thing that we'll be able to contribute after we're spending all of our money raising all these children is to tell our children to go and get a job from uh, the, the, the neo-colonialists. And that's it, that's the only option you have. And then you know, you know, we'll just be basically a modern day version of slaves in a new world where this is our continent, but everybody owns and runs everything. And I'm not saying our one movement is going to save this uh, thing, because it's not. It's, uh, it's a combination of uh, different energy of us, you know, this, you know, which includes also the Ghanaian president that's always just, just reaching out and saying, come back home. And even if it's just that energy alone, and then other people actually, when you come here, they actually about the business and the life and help you and work with you to get things done versus chopping your money and doing things. Uh, so. This is the energy of working with family, so just appreciate everybody joining us and supporting us because uh, the only we, uh, the, the, the way we end up getting black dollars to, to to spend in Africa is based on doing business in America, and so I'm always thankful for America, and it uh, gave me and my family a great opportunity to come from Jamaica, and so we're definitely thankful for that, and uh, we're not here to beat down about America. So the only thing I would say about about America is that uh, I don't think that we're we're getting enough from America. We know we have to we have to milk the cow. Yeah. Let's keep on milking it and get what we need to get and build our future in America and future in other parts of the world. So family, uh, so welcome to Ghana and uh, welcome to paradise and uh, this, uh, enjoy this incredible journey. We'll we put a lot of work into it to make sure that you have the best journey of a lifetime. And uh, we also put our energy together where you know, this is a... Uh, 88 page tour book and I'm not gonna act like I typed up the 88 page tour book last month because I didn't. Uh, I typed it up over uh, like 16 years. Yes. <laughs> so what I ended up doing is just changing things over a period of time. But uh, this is this is it and you know I, I want us to be exceptional. I want us whenever we're trying to compete to stand out and just be the best we can be, you know, as a global pan-African family because that's what it's about, family. It's about us doing what we need to do to provide a better life for our children in the future. You know? So 
the journey continues and I just really appreciate the changes that we've made. We made me and my good brother and father talk about the last journey. And we, last journey was great, but unfortunately, uh, you know, we had to do a hotel change. And, um, you know, and it, you know, it's like that. So you're on the better end of that change. <laughs> Let me just say that. Uh, and, um, and then my son always you know, beef with me like, well, I went into this pool and I got cut. I went into this pool, so that's why that's what I appreciate about children. Because all you just have to do is tell them things. Tell me what's going on. They have no need to lie about anything other than if they did something. <laughs> so, uh, and so that's why we also embrace a young generation and just trying to make sure we put them in a position where they can be and they can they can be powerful and they can just do what they need to do and just be competitive in the, in the world that we live in. And as you're driving around, uh, you know, you see right there, a beautiful high rise. How much are those things? About three hundred, three thousand dollars a month. Oh yeah. So beautiful high rise, and, and this is the the, the beautiful the part of uh, Accra. I mean, these are some expensive neighborhoods. I mean, if you, you know, like I tell people, you know, you don't have to get raw land. The reason why we got raw land was to build from the ground up for us to learn real estate development and then for us to pass it on to our generation. But ultimately, if you know you have the money, you can just come here and just get a nice house in a nice community and life is good. And uh, you look to the, um, on my left, which uh, is your right, you see some more high rises. These are apartments uh, that's for rental. So you'll see a lot of, um, rentals in this uh, area and how much are some of these rentals go from anywhere 500 to a thousand it depends on the area and it, de it depends on the area and then it depends on the type of building in that area too yeah it can be uh four hundred dollars up to maybe two or three thousand dollars oh you're yeah, trying to go like a new york city rate yeah so because some people rent some people rent uh just two rooms, uh, two rooms self-contained. Some are three rooms, some are four, some are five or six rooms self-contained, yeah. All right, perfect, family. So we're in Isogon, so uh, the journey continues, and then um, we're gonna close out, and then uh, we're gonna reconnect with our tour guide, giving us a nice introduction. So, so appreciate your energy, family, and uh, just uh, be prepared to just get yourself settled. If you want to take a swim, uh, which me and, my, uh, me and my son is going to take a swim out there for a little bit, uh, just be prepared and be ready by about 6.30 in the lobby, and then we're going to we're gonna coordinate and work out uh, your nice, wonderful welcome dinner. All right, so appreciate everybody and family. The journey continues.